everybody. Happy New Year, and welcome to one of the more unusual episodes of Plaid Stallion's Toy Ventures I've ever done. It's unique because I'm talking about modern toys, which is something I really only ever do on the Mego Museum Mint Off card component of this channel. However, this one is special to me because it involves one of my favorite toy properties of childhood, Big Jim. And there are a couple of other faces you might recognize in this. Let me just give you a bit of a backstory. At the beginning of 2021, I started getting images of strange action figures with modern Mattel stampings on them. I didn't know what to make of it, but it was just really nice to see somebody doing something with these properties. Then in April of that same year, a seller on eBay began offering about a dozen of these package sets, which are called the Back in Action set. Uh, it's a tribute of sorts to action figure properties of years past, something other than He-Man and Skeletor, and it's kind of cool because Mattel had some real doozies in the past. I'm going to let the back of the box uh, do some talking here. Mattel's favorite figures are back in action and ready to battle, only now they're ultra-rip superheroes. We broke all the rules by taking our star characters from the 60s and 70s and masterfully recreated them as beefed-up, heavily-muscled heroes with mid-80s comic book styling. It's a design that knocked the breath out of the toy world back in the day. If you're a fan of action figures, comics, and animation, then this is the collection for you. It's semantics, but I will have to say that Big Jim and Pulsar were beefed-up, heavily-muscled heroes back then, but I digress. So the back in action set comprises of three figures. The first one is Major Matt Mason, Mattel's man in space who had a very healthy run in the 1960s. This was a massive hit. Uh, Matt Mason, of course, kind of ended in early 1970, I believe, and that was more of a, a loss in the space race. Kids were not as interested once a man, they put a man on the moon. And it famously, space toys crashed in the early 1970s. But they obviously came back in a big way in the late 1970s. The second figure is Pulsar, the ultimate man of adventure. This is something I plan on doing a Toy Ventures episode on this year, but essentially, in short form, Pulsar was Mattel's take on the whole bionic man craze, except he was more of an organic man. Uh, he was a big 13-inch figure with all these different bells and whistles, and I promised to do a much more comprehensive episode on Pulsar and Hypnos in 2022. And finally, no surprise, Big Jim. More importantly, though, this is Big Jim, Commander of the Wolf Pack, which stands for Professional Agents Crime Killers. Uh, it's a superhero spy series that ran for the last two years of Big Jim's uh, life in the United States, anyways, in the mid-70s. And it left many Gen X kids being lifelong fans of these characters. There is another homage in this set, however, and that is, as these figures are in the uh, style of another Mattel toy line, the Marvel Comics Secret Wars series, because... They utilize the same body, or the more popular term now, Buck, to bring all these three characters to the same scale, as if they are in their own universe, which I kind of enjoy. This bookcase set includes three figures with unique heads, but the same body, and of course, all of the details painted on. I do kind of find this curious, just as an aside. As a kid of a certain era, I have nostalgia for two of these characters. Uh, of course, I'm far too young for Matt Mason, but I do remember seeing that stuff on clearance and being fascinated with it. However, I'm not of the age to be nostalgic for Secret Wars. Uh, I bought them when they came out, but I was already an adult collector, or I guess a young adult collector. I wasn't that old. So I kept the mint on card and insisted they would be valuable someday. However, despite that, I do applaud this concept, and I especially like the use 
of the original packaging art. That's Jack Kirby on the Big Jim Pack Commander box. The Pulsar box was one of the most eye-catching toy packages of the era, and they wisely used that. Uh, and the Matt Mason drawing is absolutely iconic. I'm not certain I like the transparency of it all. It feels like these colors should pop with the fire of a million suns. Uh, I just think you should push all the nostalgia buttons the same way I play Mortal Kombat with my kids. I am a frustrating player. My button mash science is too tight. Just wanted to take a moment to mention that my newest book, Knockoffs, Totally Unauthorized Action Figures, is now available. It's a celebration of the bootleg action figure over the decades. Knockoffs is loaded with all your favorite brands and characters if they came from the Bizarro universe. Hundreds of color photographs. This 132-page book also talks about the burgeoning bootleg toy art scene with interviews and portfolios of some of the top artists in the field. If you liked Rack Toys or Toy Ventures magazine, please consider checking out my new book. Links to my shop are in the description. Thanks for watching. So, I have many questions surrounding this set. Why didn't it ever come out? Was it a test? Is it an abandoned exclusive? Is it still waiting somewhere to be released? I have no answers, but I, I hope to get them someday. Also, I would have loved to have seen the entire pack team done in this style. Dr. Steel, you know, Warpath, Torpedo Fist, and the Whip. I'd shell out and prepay for a boxed five-pack faster than you can say disposable income. Now, I missed the initial eBay offering of these last spring, and I guess I figured they'd be announced or come out over the summer, but nothing happened at all. Uh, so when this popped up on eBay in December, I watched it like a lunatic all week and bid at the last minute, and I managed to secure it. I probably overpaid, uh, and Murphy's Law dictates that these will probably go up for sale now, and they'll be a lot less than I paid, but nothing toy ventured, nothing toy gained, I guess. Uh, I hope that phrase catches on. What do you think of the back-in-action attempt? Is this for you, or would you prefer to see straight-up reproductions of your original favorites from the 1970s, or nothing at all you can let me know in the comments below or you can hit me up at our facebook group pod stallions where i hope we'll be having a great discussion about this tonight uh thanks as always for watching if you are new to this please consider hitting like and subscribe we do this every week and until next time happy new year and talk toys not others cheers